We're here at the chocolate factory of Ogilvy in New York City with the CEO and chairman of Ogilvy One, Brian Featherston Hop. Did I get that right, Brian? You got Brian? that exactly okay. right. Okay, <laughs> good. And you have a global position at, uh, at Ogilvy One, yeah. is that right? It's so, a very big organization. How many people are in, at Ogilvy in, One? Uh, in Ogilvy One, around the world, we have about 4,500 people, about 100 offices, and uh, we're working in all the most fun parts of marketing right now, so it's a, it's a good gig. I know you're giving tours here to people who came for this party to the Ogilvy Digital Labs. It sounds pretty cool. I don't know that we're going to take the cameras there. Can you maybe give us a little bit of a flavor of what kind of testing is going on there? Test, yeah. It sounds like testing labs, yeah. um, the science of marketing and media. So it's a, it's a very interesting thing. Like everything uh, innovative, it started in a garage. In this case, it was the basement of our Ogilvy One office in Singapore. And um, we hired an engineer who used to work uh, with NASA, the rocket people. And he started inventing stuff for clients. And uh, we've done some unbelievably cool things. Um, we have phones that can see through walls. Wow. Uh, we have... Uh, little scanners you put in your hand that can analyze your skin and feed it in to a complete uh, skin care regime. Uh, we have uh, augmented reality applications. So it really sprung from this little experiment in the basement of Singapore. And we now have labs in London, uh, Sao Paulo, in Brazil, uh, in Beijing, in Singapore and here in New York City. Wow, so it's not your father's advertising agency. You've <laughs> yeah. moved beyond the world of advertising and into the world of product and content and application yeah. for, for clients. And that's helping them to create a deeper relationship with their customers, I would assume. You know, ultimately we're really trying to find the things that, with not five years from now, but between now, this year, next year, that intersection between uh, marketing and technology to do something that's really useful for our clients' own customers. So we're doing a lot of work in mobile. Uh, we're doing a lot of work with augmented reality, uh, digital point of sale and three-dimensional imagery, uh, voice recognition software so that your actual advertising can recognize who's looking at it and uh, target the uh, content accordingly. So it's a pretty interesting space. Yeah, this is really pushing the envelope. Now, I saw Brian give a presentation at the iMedia Brand Summit. It was based on the concept of digital marketing potentially being the stairway to heaven, but also potentially being the highway to hell. Right. Um, and I thought that those were great analogies. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit about what you meant by that? Well, Sarah, what's happening, especially I think in the last year where big time marketers are seeing the big inflection point in digital marketing, we've all done the experimentation, the little one-offs, the shiny objects. And to be honest, I think big time marketers are getting frustrated with that. You go nowhere. You do something that's really cool for like 10 minutes, Somebody puts it in their keynote presentation for the sales and marketing meeting, and then it goes away. And the next time you get together, you hit the reset button, you're back to square zero. So it's innovation so for innovation's it's, sake? It's totally innovation for the shiny object, yeah. and that's the highway, I'm sorry, that's the, uh, yeah, that's the highway, highway to hell. Highway to hell. <laughs> it's going nowhere. And, uh, you know, tons of people, vendors, agencies, and clients are frankly, they're taking that pathway. And uh, what I see, and I think what a lot of the smartest marketers are doing, is another approach. And it's based on starting with a bigger digital ambition, where you actually want to create a platform and an ecosystem that gets you somewhere over a two or three year period. So you link it to something big, uh, a big brand idea, then you, you put it on a technology platform that can last a couple of years, and uh, you put in the metrics right up front so that you're actually building something over time so that even if not everything succeeds beautifully the way you planned it, you're actually building towards something and that's the stairway to heaven. And I think all of the big time clients are really looking for that and they're, they're challenging everybody in the digital business. Enough with the one-offs, 
build me something that's going to endure. I think that's a smart concept, and I think that Ogilvy has really always been known for smart integration. You know, Ogilvy is such an iconic brand, and it goes back so far in the advertising industry. In fact, David Ogilvy is, you know, to many the father of advertising, really right. wrote the rules for the yeah. industry. How much of what he wrote way back when is evergreen and really applies still yeah. today? You know, I, I think he was tremendously prophetic, and uh, he was also one of those visionaries who was a copywriter, so he wrote it all down. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing to go back and and uh, see the kind of things that David saw about about client service, about the uh, the necessity that advertising needs to sell, the role of a big idea, and the only thing that that isn't relevant to today is some of his channel choices. So he was obviously talking about print. Yeah. Uh, he was talking about, you know, this emergence of television, lots of which still holds true. Uh, he saw a little bit of the beginning of, of digital and the internet. Uh, he loved direct marketing. So with a small exception of some of the channels, he was unbelievably visionary. So uh, we just did a big uh, bunch of research in the summer of 2010. And it was to uh, understand how selling is changing in the 21st century. So, uh, you know, how does social media right. change selling? How does video, how does mobile, et cetera? Absolutely. And a lot of the fundamental principles and the DNA of great selling absolutely holds true. Yes. Uh, one of the things that's different is how uh, the internet in particular and the ascendancy of the customer as king uh, the customer is now a lot more empowered and has a lot more of the information. So when they go to buy, uh, the buying process is a bit different. But uh, a ton of what David Ogilvy said absolutely holds true today. Right. And you're taking yeah. it forward from what do we want the consumer to see or hear to what do we want them to do? And, and it, how, how do they interact with the brand? And, and right. th there's no question there's some big, profound changes. And the, the monster is the empowered consumer so that uh, when you're selling to them the old, you know, beat them to death with the stick, uh, not gonna work uh, in the world of uh, permission. But when you flip around the buyer and seller relationship, uh, it's just amazing to see uh, how many of the traditional rules hold true and uh, how some of the new ones are evolving. So once again, it's a phenomenal time in the, uh, the history of marketing. Brian, you've been in the agency business for a long time. I was in, a, in the agency business a long right. time myself. What advice would you give someone who is getting into the business today? Uh, first of all, I think it's a fantastic place to be because so much is going on and so much is changing and I've got three pieces of advice. So uh, number one is stay unbelievably co close to customers. And if you can understand the customer's journey and where the money is and how they make decisions, that's golden. The other thing is you have to stay close to the results. And a ton of people in the agency business kind of step back and they leave, leave that to the analytics people or they leave that to the clients. That's a terrible mistake. Stay close to the business results. And the third thing is it's a long ride. Uh, I encourage people who start out in the business, Take the number 62, deduct your current age. That's the number of years you have left until early retirement. It's a long, long ride. And it doesn't matter if you get promoted on Tuesday. You make all your money after your 40th birthday. Go for the long game. Well, speaking of great branding, this is a fantastic place for a party, and it speaks very well for Ogilvy. There's a lot happening inside, and I think you and I should go back and have a drink. So thank you so much for sharing your insights, and thanks again for hosting this party, Brian. Well, thank you very much.